What's going on everybody? Today I wanted to talk about snapping triceps syndrome and a little bit also about submuscular transpositions. I had a person uh, write me a question asking, will submuscular ulnar nerve transposition help snapping triceps syndrome? And the answer to that is no. And let me explain why. Snapping triceps syndrome is where the medial head of your triceps is actually snapping over the bone. And hello, hey, let me make this video. Jeez. This is like the fifth time I've done this video because he keeps jumping up on here and making a noises. So anyway, um, the, the actual triceps is popping over the bone and, and with it, it usually pushes the nerve, where hence where you get the uh, tingling and, and, and those sorts of things. So um, the, you know, routing your ulnar nerve on this side and, and, you know, a submuscular is where it goes underneath these forearm muscles. That doesn't do anything to alleviate the issue of your triceps snapping over. Now, you know, the fact that you're saying that you have snapping triceps, I'm hoping that you went to a good hand surgeon and they've told you that this is what you have because that's kind of, I mean, that's very rare. Not, it's not as common as, you know, just ulnar nerve issues in general, compression, subluxation. Um, so, you know, the feeling of something snapping, that could just be your nerve. So, you know, unless it's, they've sort of diagnosed you with that, I would highly encourage you, if you think you have that, to make sure that, you know, you get some sort of um, confirmation from a, a good hand surgeon that that is exactly what's going on. Now, just to further illustrate the point, there are, you know, a very few number of people that, you know, went in because they had ulnar nerve issues and the doctor didn't know to look for snapping triceps or anything like that and gave them a subcutaneous or submuscular ulnar nerve transposition. And then, you know, they still have this popping and they're like, what's going on? And, you know, in that case, it wasn't diagnosed properly and uh, you know, they had to go back and get this taken care of. So what they do with snapping triceps, because that's completely separate. I mean, you could have a snapping tricep surgery and then them just do a subcutaneous ulnar transposition or I, I suppose you could have them do a decompression. I mean it's it's all up to the surgeon but with that they'll actually take a little bit of your medial head of your triceps away so that it's not uh, pushing anything over or going over itself and then in some cases I've read that they take the triceps tendon and sort of move it into a different place. They're usually very careful with what they do um, involving the triceps because they don't want to compromise the ability of the triceps to function. So um, hopefully that answers that part of your question. Um, secondly, they asked, uh, will a submuscular transmission cause the nerve to be compressed if you go to the gym? Now that can happen. It's highly dependent upon the individual surgeon, you know, how you heal, so many different factors that it, I really can't say a submuscular ulnar nerve transmission will, you know, become, you know, cause your nerve to be compressed if you go to the gym because there's probably a lot of people out there that have had submuscular transpositions and never had a problem with it. But I also have read that, you know, the number one issue of people that have submuscular um, transpositions that if they do experience any issues afterwards, the number one issue is usually the you know musculature of the forearm where the nerve is routed under, causing a secondary point of compression. So it, it is possible. Um, it was enough for me to not want to get it because a lot of the studies I've read, you know, say that the outcomes, you know, postoperative outcomes of a subcutaneous versus submuscular are, are pretty much equal. In fact, you know, and then when you take that into account, why wouldn't you do the subcutaneous? Because it has a far quicker recovery time. Um, because you're not, you know, you're not cutting any muscle per se, you know. So that's what takes a long time to heal with the submuscular is the detachment of the flexor pronator muscle. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. If you're not doing any kind of contact or you know, there's not a lot of trauma that's going on to this area on a regular basis, you're probably just fine with a subcutaneous transposition. And again, 
you know, transposition is based upon you having subluxation. So, I mean, with this person, it's clear that they have subluxation of some kind because they're saying like, oh, you know, they're talking about sappy triceps syndrome, so they, they could have two subluxations, so two subluxations of their nerve and their tricep. Um, but, you know, again, just to reiterate, make sure that's confirmed that you're, and it's not just because you've read a bunch of stuff on the internet, because that can be kind of misleading and, you know, it's good that we self-diagnose and be aware of what's going on in our body, but we also need, um, you know, a lot of times, especially with something like that, that's so, um, rare and, you know, hard to diagnose that you really go see someone to do it. And then, you know, as far as subcutaneous submuscular, that's a personal decision. Uh, again, I, I chose the subcutaneous because, you know, I, I like this person was like, well, I, why run the risk of it being compressed? Um, why have a longer recovery time than I need to? Um, I'm not, you know, an MMA athlete, you know, I'm not like playing football or something. So to me, it, it didn't really make sense to do it. Um, and, you know, my surgeon that I finally found, which I always tell you guys to find somebody you're comfortable with and confident in their ability and knowledge, uh, he, he told me, you know, point blank, he said, oh, you know, I actually do a lot of uh, submuscular revisions because people have had them and then they have compression issues and then I redo them as a subcutaneous. So, you know, that that's also something to keep in mind. So long story short, sub muscular transmission will not solve your snapping tricep syndrome that's something separate that needs to be addressed and as part of that it will address your nerve because you're clearly having uh, some numbness or whatever issues um, but again uh, as far as sub muscular causing compression afterwards it can it might not it might i can't say uh, but if you don't want to run that risk a subcutaneous is probably the way to go so, you know, hence, you know, going forward, find a surgeon that's in line with those views because it's, there's, you know, many different ways to address ulnar nerve compression that, uh, you know, fit the standard of care. Uh, so, you know, one surgeon will say, oh, you need a submuscular. One surgeon will say, oh, you need a subcutaneous. One say, oh, we'll just do a decompression and see what happens. One will say, oh, you know, you don't even need decompression. Let's do endoscopic decompression. It's less invasive. Or somebody might say, oh, we'll do a decompression with a slight medial epicondylectomy. It's dependent upon what the surgeon does. So it's up to you to sort of get in touch with what's going on in you and, and, and find the surgeon that does what you think you need done. In my case, I thought, you know, sub subcutaneous was the way to go. I had subluxation that needed to be addressed, so I knew it had to be a transposition and submuscular was overkill in my opinion. So again, that's my two cents. Hope that helps you guys. Uh, keep the questions coming. And uh, as always, aloha.